Hello everyone. I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, thank you for joining. <laughs> I can see Theresa. I'm so excited. Um, thank you, Theresa, for joining. Thank you for accepting to do Hi, sis. Good, good evening. <laughs> good to see you. Good to see you too. Thank Hi, you for yeah. accepting to do this with me. Oh, no, 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 no. It's yeah. fine. It's fine. Thank uh, God. You're welcome. We're just going to wait a bit and let people join in the next few minutes because it's not four o'clock yet. That's, that's me. Yeah. yeah. We, How's the family? We're very fine. Thank you. And yours? Yes. Great. We're doing well. God is good. Hope you're enjoying the summer. <laughs> we're trying. <laughs> you know, it's not actually full summer yet in Scotland. You get the friend. Yeah, you can have all two or three or four seasons in one day. <laughs> Welcome, Kakin B. We're going to be addressing people with their Instagram um, handle so that we know who is giving us suggestions and who is coming in. You're welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, Rafa came in as I logged in. Thank you for joining. You're welcome to. Um, we're going to be talking about racism and how to explain to kids without um, spreading it but we are with, yeah. waiting for some few minutes so that we can see if we have more viewers and we can just go on from there we're just going to wait for about three four minutes more but while mm -hmm. we do that um i i would like us to just say a word of prayer for kids that Great. are hot and uh, broken by this racism thing because it it has affected some kids more than some. Some are just mm. hearing about it and some are really injured and it has affected their mental health. I would just like us to say a word of prayer for them if everyone can join me. Father, yeah. we thank you for all thank kids you. kids all over the world. We know you've given them to us for a purpose. Father, we decree and declare concerning every child that has been damaged by the racism. Father, you are the one that calls things to be as though they were. Father, Lord, we decree concerning them that they are healed from hate, they are healed from racism, they are healed, their mind is renewed. You will send them help at every time, Lord. And Lord, we decree and declare an end to this monster eating deep into the society in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Welcome everyone that's joined us. Um, I can see ITJ Solutions. I can see Ghana Daniel. Thank you for joining. I can see um Yadik Mbok. Thank you for joining. Papi Manda Clothing. Thank you for joining us. Um, we'll be talking about racism. Um, this is the way we do it. We we um Theresa and I will just start by giving you um like a brief of what we are going to say then we leave the comments um, to you to give us your own opinions and ideas. And we'll be glad if everyone can participate and make this quite mm -hmm. interesting for us today. We don't want it to be boring yeah. and we don't want it to be a waste of time. And I believe we are going to learn a lot from this today. Um, yeah. Theresa, I, I, I was looking at the dictionary for the definition of racism today and Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, well, I, I'll just go check again and see if yes, it's just of not definitely what I think it is. Thank you, Foley Lad, for joining us. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So I was looking at the dictionary for the definition of racism and mm -hmm. I, I saw various like various definitions, but I, I just saw that it has got to do with um race which yeah. sometimes has to do with body shape, color, yeah. um, air texture. Yep. So I, I, I just checked it and I like, I, I like the way they bring like the features in and mm -hmm. not just talking about the color alone. It's not just about the color. It's just about the body shape, the shape of the nose, the jaws, the air texture and all sorts. Thank you, Ola Yuka. Thank you, Niji, for joining us. Actually, this is uh, going to be interesting today. We will be addressing no. <laughs> people by their Instagram handle, and we're talking about racism and how to explain to children. And the aim of this discussion today is to win with love. 
So we are yes. not here to create more fear or it in the heart of anybody. We are just here to mm -hmm. make sure that we are going to spread this love everywhere we go. So I, I was talking to, um, I, I would like us in the comment session to come with and um, comment. What, what do you think racism is to you? Is it just about the color? Because I, I've just said, I, I would like to raise that to talk before the comment session will come in now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, like you said, um, racism in the dictionary is defined in terms of prejudice, mm -hmm. you know, or discrimination that a person may experience uh -huh. based on their, the color of their skin, their hair, mm -hmm. and all of that. And also, it comes with intent. So right. I wouldn't call it racism when the person does not have the intention to do it. And even the Bible talks about intent before they act. Yeah. So anyone that wants to be a racist against someone would definitely be doing it intentionally. Yeah. And the reason for racism is that this person doing it, exhibiting this character, has the belief that they have superior. So a yeah. sense of pride in some way. So I want to make you feel inferior with your looks because I feel I'm superior. Yeah. that's what it is that's that's yeah. that, that's the actual picture behind it whatever the person is saying or doing is because they want to make you feel inferior and to think that they are superior yeah. and yeah. obviously once you are made to feel inferior you will think every other person is superior, superior to you. above you yeah. whereas they are not yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah so that's yeah. definitely yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I when I when that. I posted this on Facebook, um, I think he has already joined before. He he is my uncle, is my big big uncle. He, he commented and he, he said something. He said, um, "To God, there is just one race, and it's called the yeah, human the race." Human race, yes. And what we show us that that is true is because we all have the red blood. There's no black yeah. blood. There's no white blood. That's it. Just got That's it. one. So I, I would like people in the comment section to comment with what they think um, think racism is. Um, I think um, Unity is saying racism is any form of unequal treatment due to your race. Yeah, it's unequal, really. It's, it happens every time, at time, and it's not about the... It's not about people saying it alone. It can be an action. Do you get yeah. what I'm saying? Because sometimes it's not about people telling you you're black, you're mm -hmm. this. Sometimes it's even, um, like I was saying, I, I think in this environment where I am, racism is like institutional. It's it's not like people will tell it to your face, but it's, I, I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. Is Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> it's like in it's the system, there. in the workplace, in the school, and it's subtle that you cannot really pick it out. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I, I would like people in the comment section. Um, so I'll give Theresa some to give us um like more brief into it before we go deep into this. Yes. Okay. Like I established, is any prejudice or discrimination on their yeah. treatment that you you experience based on your color? You know, yeah. your hair. I like the way you say your hair. And the, what strikes me the most when it comes to racism, which we may not be paying attention to because of yeah. the Black Lives Matter we are dealing with in this moment, is that yeah. even as Blacks, we can be racist against the whites. Yeah, it's, it's not just about people the People with whatever color, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's not so just about it's the everyone way. that has some, kind, some, some prejudice in them, which is why as children of God, we should always yeah. check our hearts. Yeah. What's, what's the position of my heart towards this person? For instance, we are in foreign land. You would have to deal with foreigners, even if it's not the people of this land, the people of other culture and other lands that have yeah. come here. Am I being racist against them? And I'm complaining that the people of this land are being racist against me. Yeah. So these are the things we need to check in our hearts as children of God. I, and I, I like think, the fact that... Sorry to cut you short. I, I think yeah, we, we do this most of the time. We like to yeah. like, play the victim. Mm -hmm. and in, That's a way, it. in a way, we do it too to other people. It might not be to somebody from England, but it might be somebody yeah. from Bangladesh, India, or somewhere exactly. else. And we unconsciously um, just do this and we don't know. But because it's Black Lives Matter issue now, everybody mm -hmm. thinks it's just about the Black. It's not about the Black, mm -hmm. it's about any color, like you said. Every, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I, I would like to establish as we go on that, like I like what you said. There is just one race, and it's the human race. Yeah. 
is the same blood that flows in every vein. Yeah. And that takes us back to God's intention at creation. What was God's intention? Uh-huh. For man to be like him, to be in unity. Yeah. Now, God sees no color because God is not of color. Mm-hmm. And we shouldn't deal with ourselves or other people in terms of their color or stature. God, yeah. God does not see any of those things. The spirit of man is the same. Whether you're tall or short, white or black or brown, whatever color, yeah. the spirit of man is it's the same. Spirit. I, I, I think I get something from that. There's no tall spirit, no short spirit. No, no short spirit. Short spirit. <laughs> right. Inidi just said something. She said, sometimes I believe yeah. racism is not intentional. Mm. Um, I think I, I think in a way it is intentional. It's just that the after effect of it was not really like was not really planned for or might not be planned for by people to true they, they didn't know what would come out of it i've i've seen people said some things to me that would just laugh and just move on and maybe i was with someone else who is not my color and they would just look at me like shocked like they're expecting me to just um react and i just laugh about it and i just move on and and they just look at me like i'm expecting you to react but i just see that some of them they just want to crack a joke and it's just like you know, so when you want to feel this this thing is as black as banker, it, you, you know what I'm trying to say. The person might not be racist, really, but he's just trying to crack a joke. And it's very funny these days. You have to watch every word you say because everything just mm-hmm. counts. So to everything. crack a joke mm-hmm. now with a white person or a black person or a brown person or whatever person, you have to be careful what you say. So I understand when she says that um, racism is not um, intentional yeah that's it because for instance if you take the case of kids yeah for instance as soon as a child starts to go to school especially if it's a black child or brown child in um a school predominantly people of white color let me see you know uh-huh. as soon as the child starts to go to school you start to get the feeling i'm different here yeah that's normal yeah i've got a child who goes to a school and he's the only brown person in his class yeah. So you get things like, oh, your color is different. Why are you? Why is your color like this? But what do you say to such children? You've got to let them know you are perfect. Yeah. You're created yeah. in yeah. God's image, yeah. and yeah. it's nothing about the color. Now, for those children, I don't think some of them actually understand that what they are yeah. saying is a yeah. form of racism. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So for those children, I wouldn't hold them accountable because they don't have the intention of making this person yeah. feel less it is when it becomes a bully i would take it as a racist action like yeah. okay they actually intend anyone who wants to racist against someone will have the intention of making that person the intention is really important even in yeah, the court of yeah. law when something yeah. is done what is the intention was the okay for mother case for instance was this mother case premeditated, premeditated yeah. was it an accident it so the intention yeah. the motive is really important, really important. and that, someone that's what's um, sorry to cut it short someone was yeah. telling me today that um a racist is not actually born it is mm-hmm. learned so yes so for children they are just children sometimes they even that's ask it. us questions that that you just open your mouth and be like oh <gasps> Where did that come out from? So they ask That's questions. It. They they do all sorts. And but what the the issue kids that are facing this might have is that they might not know how to respond to it, and because they're mm. a minority, they might feel shocked. Or mm-hmm. I don't I don't know how to say. It. They might feel like left yeah, out. Helpless. Or, yeah, helpless at this time. So I, I think um. Um, Oluwain Kaoye, me bros, you are all right to post it again, please. <laughs> if you want to, it's all right. <laughs> I actually saved it on my phone. <laughs> right, he said mostly unintentional because it's rooted in prejudices they grow with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, you just said something about the children feeling less low you know yeah, and helpless. helpless and that's why the place of the parents is important yeah i think yeah. the bulk of the job rests on us parents yes, yes. what's in your own heart 
Yeah. If my child comes to me and tells me certain things, I want to teach him the love of God. So I'm not going to react. I'm going to respond yeah. to whatever he's saying. And yeah. I think sometimes as parents, which is most times we tend to react and not respond. We tend to pick on the action and we react to the person and not to respond. So our response is what we help our children navigate things the right way. I, I, I could remember forward. that when, when, um, my kids came from Nigeria to the UK. I was scared at first because I, I mm -hmm. was like, how oh, are they going to settle into school? So the first few, few weeks they went into school, they will come back with questions. They'll be like, mommy, why, why are we so dark? Why are we so dark? And, and my son came home one day, mommy, I am really black. Because it's, it's, not, my, it's not as light as I yeah. am, but it's yeah. really dark. He said, I am really black. I'm like, you're perfect. And, and sometimes I want to see your reaction. If you react with That's fear, it. if you react with so much fear, they will also pick up the fear and they will feel mm -hmm. like we are helpless. Let's, they, 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 yeah, there's nothing we can do. Mommy cannot do anything. So mm. I, I just made them to understand that God just loves varieties. He, he loves different That's colors. That's it. I like and that. I, I, told, I told them, I said, the, you've got an Indian in your class. Is it the same color as a white person? He said no. no. He said, so it shows you that God loves us in different colors, and it it, it just settles it. And That's I it. think from that day, he's not bothered about whatever color they see. Is wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. From, from wow. here, I, I will let one. I will let us to uh, like us to go into um relating as per age group now. Mm -hmm. let's let's start from like age four because let's say zero to three is just they nothing they don't naive. really know much Let, let's start from age four between age four and then um, let's say eight. 11 okay Let, i just want us to break it like age four to eight they still got this okay. naive mind from mm -hmm. age yeah. eight onward yes. they start making up their mind and picking up okay. things so let's let's start from age four and if your age four child comes home or let's say for instance we, we went for a party one day and mm -hmm. we got there and my son ran back to me like he can't stay there i said why he said everybody's not like him do you get it he wants yeah. to dance you know africans we are like redemic i don't know how to you know we dance we love music mm -hmm. we know beats and all this thing he wants to but the way he's doing it is like excess of what everyone is doing so he was yeah. like he's going to withdraw and just sit down with me i had to tell him over and over again like everyone is different and thankfully somebody mm -hmm. else came in that was like his kind of uh, energy to music so mm -hmm. he was able to fit in but there are cases where these kids will come home and you wouldn't even know what to say so how, how do I you know. explain to that kind of child? I, I, because um, I don't know if anyone watched um, CNN recently. Sesame Street was doing something on racism for kids. It was on CNN no, yesterday. It will still be on their okay. website anyway. They were doing something for kids to explain to kids. And there's this lady on Instagram to doing it in the US to explain to kids. But how do you explain to a four-year-old? How do you explain to a four-year-old that has seen racism? Not, not that it came on with questions now. They've seen injustice. And they're like, mm -hmm. why did they let that one go and this one is staying? Why can he have this and this one cannot have it? Before he start making, before he start building like on this foundation that oh, I am less privileged, I cannot do mm -hmm. this. These people can. How do you explain to? I, I want people in the comment section to just give us yeah. um, their opinion about this. How do you explain to a four year old just in their language? We don't have to speak big English. Just say it in their <laughs> language, you know. <laughs> How do you explain to it? I just want like a simple sentence or construction of sentences just to explain to a four year old. Let's say four to eight. The mm -hmm. reason why someone was treated unjustly because of their race or color. So and the I, I, why... right, go on, go on. I, yeah, I personally would respond to a child of that age by reaffirming their person. Mm, yeah. 
because that's what they need. Once the child gets an affirmation from you as a parent, mm -hmm. they will be able to move on. And children are so quick to forget things <laughs> that happen. You know, they, you did, you the said, she said, that is what I'm here to learn. No. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Okay. <laughs> we can also pinch on we your brain. Like, <laughs> tell us some things. Yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> I, I, as I was saying, I wouldn't reaffirm such a child because... They, they, they are not too exposed to the extent to comprehend and for what's happening. Yeah. And yeah. I think in reaffirming their person and to let them know that you are holistic, that's why our conversations with our children is really important. Whatever age they have, we can always come down to their level. Yeah. Say, okay, this yeah. person doesn't want to play with you. Mommy is here to play with you. Dad is here to play with you. Your brother, your sister is here to play with you. We are one family. And I, I tell my own children, about people in other communities that we, mm. we, 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 um, we agree together, we connect well, people in the church, people in a neighborhood that we mm. connect well. Mm. You may have someone in your class that doesn't want to play with you, but see, there is a community of people here that are your family. And what I also areas. tell my son, yeah, what I also tell my son is that, you know, we all have our choices. Maybe this person wants this kind of play and you want to play this way. You want to be here. They want to be there. You, you don't always agree, but there will be a time you might come to some agreement. So it's to your friend, but he has other people he's chosen to play with in that moment, you know, so just move on. You know? yeah. And I think in some way it will help our children develop a tough skin, actually. Yeah. yeah. Welcome, Toby Temi. We are trying to um, explain to ourselves <laughs> how to tell a four-year-old a four to eight-year-old child about racism how to explain to them why someone was treated unjustly or why Mr. Hay can do something and get away with it and Mr. B cannot even try and do it at all without getting arrested. So this, let's say I am the little child that comes to you and said, mommy, they just, they both stole something from a store and only this guy got arrested. So why, why can't they leave him alone? How do you explain that to a child? Do, do you get what I'm saying here? Like, how do you explain it to a child? Like, well, it's because uh, uh, they don't like blacks. No, because, do, never do you get see what that. I'm saying now? Because there are some situations, right? We, we, we are lucky to be in an environment where it is not really, it is, like I said, it's institutionalized yeah. here. It's not like in our faces. But if you were in places like America where these kids grow up to see these things happen, do you get what I'm saying? How do you, how do you not make them hate? Or let's say, how do you not make them hate? So that is where it we It goes go. back to the parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it yeah. goes back to the parents I will respond to each situation mm -hmm. as a mom first of all I watch the kind of news I expose my children to, to. Yeah. Yeah. I think some things are just too big for their age to comprehend mm -hmm. when they are above eight, I can actually explain some things better but between mm -hmm. four to eight, mm -hmm. what are you going to say to them you are just going to create some bias in their mind mm -hmm. you know yeah. And it's really important the kind of news we ex we expose our children to. Even when this whole COVID nineteen started, I made sure that my son, who is who will be seven soon, was not let her on to know the full details of what is happening. Yeah. There is a limit to what we tell children. I think someone yeah. just put a comment here. I don't believe in ordering words. However, at that age, we can just help him get over it. But as time goes on, we can. I, I think that is one of the solutions. Like let them grow up to be able to understand yeah. things. But while they're growing up, don't raise them with hatred. Don't raise mm -hmm. them hating people or hating the environment. Because this is it. You cannot thrive in an environment you hate. It's not possible. No. Because you will not be able to see what you need to see. What you'll be seeing is just that obstacle, and you won't be able to move forward. So. We are not supposed to raise them in hate. And um, Toby Temi just said something. She said, if we start okay. to see our kids as an individual, a personality of their own, then we will find mm -hmm. it difficult explaining things to them. We, mm -hmm. we, we won't, I think she wanted to say, we won't find it. Okay. If we okay. Start to see our kids yeah. As an like understanding, I think yeah. maybe she's talking about when you get to understand your child's personality. Yeah, you know how they get yeah, to 
grab information yeah. and take it in exactly without like issue. i said they are coming down to their own level yeah yeah i, I didn't know you should just there's another question coming yeah he said racism is historical it is taught and learned mm -hmm. it is a mm -hmm. subject of knowing the reason behind racism i don't see to feel inferior so yeah. Like you need to understand the reason why is the remember I said at the beginning is for those yeah. person to feel yeah. inferior and yeah. you want to feel superior yeah. Yeah. to make you feel less of who you are. Very, very and important. if you if you were to look at it from the Bible perspective, mm -hmm. which I don't know if everyone joining tonight is a Christian, but I am. The Word of God makes it clear: there is no Jew, no Greek, no yeah. male, no female. Yeah. You know, no bond, yeah. no free. Everyone is the same before God. Yeah. We are all accepted yeah. in the beloved. Yeah. And these are the things we need to fill our minds with so that when yeah. things happen to us, that's where I personally go back to find my strength. Yeah. And that's where I lead my own children to when things happen in life. Yeah. What does the Bible yeah. say about you? What does the Bible say about us? So the reason behind every racist um, action is so that you feel inferior but when we understand that I cannot be made to feel less of who I am, yeah. we'll be able to overcome it. Even though it's happening, but we will still be able to overcome it and move yeah. on. And our children will be able to overcome it and move on. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'll like, thank you, Omoyeni Daudu, for joining us. I, I would like to say this, that um, while we are discussing racism, I want us to like see racism as hate because it's the spirit of hatred. Yes. It is the spirit of hatred. It's so not the spirit of God. We discussing, let's let's know that it cannot stay in us. It it yeah. is not part of the fruit of the spirit. In fact, no. Christianity is based on love. So That's whatever it. is not inside love should not dwell in us. That's so in as much as we have different views, we were raised in different places. Personally, I when I talk, I shout. And if we go out with my sons and friends that are not my color. They look at me and say, Panky, you shout a lot. When I talk, <laughs> like when I want to correct them, they're like, come on, stop it. They, they just, but, but they are getting used to it because that's just me. And they've seen that sometimes, sometimes some of them will look at you like the child will be disturbed after you shouted at them. But they mm -hmm. say that they just go on with their play or they'll be like, oh, so they are not yes. disturbed because they see that it's going to affect their mental health or something when you shout at them like that. But they, we, when, when you start seeing the difference in people, the difference in the way we are raised and you say that we are just just place everybody where they are this is how things are done here yeah? this is how things we will not have issues with each other do you get what i'm saying yes. but sometimes yes. we look at it like what are they doing start out to do it do you get what i'm mm -hmm. saying which we do a lot mm -hmm. thinking that our own ways of doing things are just the best Mm -mm, no way in fact as a parent i really look at our own way of doing things talking about being a nigerian and uh -huh. i'm thinking no 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 no. i'm not going to agree with that yeah <laughs> know, like you I said I, yeah, yeah like that's the shouting okay. part seems yeah. to be natural that's your natural reaction to your child yeah. Yeah. don't do that you, you, and you think you're you, you think you're just being friend with yeah. what you're saying you know yeah. but it's more than that so than yeah that, but yeah. also i think as parents we also have to unlearn some things in yeah. our parenting yeah yeah we have we to have unlearn to, certain things in our parenting. Very, very yeah very the, yeah i remember going over a devotional last year and i was on parenting and one of the words that struck me in that devotion that i still hold dear till today is that the fruit of the spirit you need as a parent is not parental control it's mm. self-control <laughs> it's self-control yeah. so i know i think one of the points we're looking at is as a parent, there is one of a point that talks about as a parent, how you respond. Yeah, and also I think yeah. sometimes our response is based on what was going on inside us mm -hmm. and not the child. Yeah. 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 And we want to impose what's inside us on them. So what, Which this is is wrong. what you should think of this child. This, this is what you should it. think of this person, but they are so, they're so soft to their mind is still very fresh, like a fresh, um, Clay is a blank, is a, is a so plain it, white board. It, it, it is the way you mold it till it starts forming. That's it. It's so what you write on it to carry on for years. Thank, thank you, thank you. It's a blank, like a blank page, like a blank check. Yeah, 
Yeah. Like a blind. Um, Toby Temi just said something. She said, I had a course where I learned how to start relating with my kids as friends. It is very important because I think that's the basis yes. of pre parenting, really. If yeah. you really want to raise them well, you've got to be their friend. And Susie yeah. Smith is saying something. She said, definitely do not believe we should spread it. However, I believe we should validate a child's feeling about racism that they might yeah. experience and can breed it if we don't. I think they should know too what is happening. Like you said, it, it, you have to look at a certain age because I can't mm -hmm. go to my two-year-old and start telling him about that or mm -hmm. He will not even understand. Um, I can't go to a three, four year old. Mm -hmm. They won't understand. It will scare them. But I think I think from six yeah. they try to yeah. reason yeah. what's yeah. happening here. So yeah. from that time, hope you navigate it with your yeah. age level. Yeah, yeah. So it's very important to be able to relate with them, to explain these things, and let them know that right. This is up. This will happen in the society. Like I was yeah. saying, when when my kids came, I was just asking him some few days ago i was saying so when you came from nigeria did this thing happen in your school he said they did it the first few times which i'm mm. guessing would be about a year mm -hmm. but he said but they stopped that's it so and as kids is just is just eight and as kids i i think he's starting to pick it up like i think they ate me but Mm. When I, I could remember he came home and he will say something that I'd be like, maybe they don't want to play with you. Well, maybe they are confused because they've not been out of this place. They don't know what's good. outside there. That's maybe. a good response. So I kept telling him, I think it has built him up. He's made friends. He's made a lot That's of it. friends. And yeah. he has enjoyed it really. So I think it's, it's important good. we watch our responses to them it's because really they are important. definitely going to be their friends. In this kind of, yes. if you are raising your kid outside of where you live, you've got to let them live because they, if they need to excel in life, they need to. They can, you mm. cannot live alone. If God wanted us yeah. to live alone, He won't create a, create us in like pairs. So we just leave mm -hmm. Adam to enjoy his. That's it. <laughs> he, he we need to community. Relate. Like we are, we are we relational beings, so we he want us to relate. So we have to teach them to relate with people, like. Yeah, properly and in love, which is very, very important. Um, in love. I, I think Toby Temi just says, so I believe if I can explain racism to my friend, I should be able to explain racism to my child as long as the mental capacity. I, I understand what she's saying. Mm -hmm. I understand what she's Toby saying. Toby speaking from being a psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> All the psychologists there. <laughs> okay, okay. You want us to talk as psychologists? <laughs> All the psychologists yeah. there. <laughs> I, I totally agree. Their mental health is really important. Yeah. And that's why we should talk about it. I personally believe that we should talk things through when they happen. Because the more people are able to get off their chest, yeah. the better and quicker it will be for them to move ahead. So definitely, I want to hear my child come and tell me how they feel, you know. And I want to come down to their level. Okay, I'm so sorry that happened. Like my child has told me, this person does not want to play with me. Somebody asked me, why is my color light? I said to him, you know what? You are from Nigeria. If you go to Nigeria, everyone is your color. But you are in a foreign land. Everyone is in your color. So you need to understand. But there is nothing wrong with your color. There is yeah. nothing wrong with it. And I'm so glad his best friend in school is a Scottish. Yeah. So, and he's doing fine. Say, so, oh, but you have this person as your friend playing with you. I'm not going to dispute and say, no, 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 no. That didn't happen. Don't take it far. No, I will admit yeah. it happened. We talk it through. But here you have people that you can also play with. And I think it's important for their mental health to let them express themselves. I totally agree. Yeah. Uh, Kakibi04 is saying we need to let them know that racism exists but can stop them from can't can stop, stop them, them true. from achieving from yeah, They need to know that it exists. They need to know. They That's really true. need to yeah. know. It's very yeah. important to let them know. Especially when they... Yeah. Let, let's talk about teenagers now. That's it. At, at that age, I don't have a teenage child yet, but I've read books and I have Neither cousins, have. so I've, 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 I've seen some things. At that age, they don't even want to share so many things with their parents. They've got this wall they build gradually, which you have to keep crushing and getting to relate with them. 
and they go to school, they see things and because they don't want to feel weak, especially for the boys, because they don't want to feel weak. They don't want to feel like I can't undo, I can't handle things. They mm. don't come back home to tell you. I was discussing with somebody. She said, our son only told us some things after he had finished college, which mm. he, she didn't even know about. Like they almost killed him in school because of the really? thing, and he handled it himself, which is very scary. So if you've got a teenage really child scary. now, uh, how, how do you, how do you like relate to, to with the child? They, they know what's happening and, like we were saying, we, we started from the very young age. So let's say we would have fed them with the right thing from childhood. Mm -hmm. And let, we are mm -hmm. just going to paint a scenario of a child that has been fed with the right words from, yeah. from childhood. How, how do you keep supporting them? How do you react to racist reaction against your teenage child? Is it every time well, you report to the police? Do, do you get what I'm saying? I just want us to talk about parents' reaction now. Yeah. I think... For the teenagers, that's um, a tricky one because yeah. I don't have one yet, <laughs> but I know someday we'll get to that stage. Yeah. And I think majorly, if we have built that friendship from a young age, yeah. it's important we continue to check every year. Are we still yeah. friends? Are we still yeah. best of friends? Yeah. Can you tell me anything that is happening? Mm -hmm. Then I think it's really good for us to ask questions as parents. I know African parents, sometimes we don't do that. We just assume. I think asking questions, and now I'm talking about open-handed questions yeah. that will push them to that place. Is, every, is everything really okay? So what no, happens? That sounds like so a what did you say? <laughs> Exactly. So what did you say? Okay, yeah. let, another thing I think we can do is to watch certain movies together that will prompt them to say what is, when you know what your child likes, if you engage in that act with them, it could be a certain game they enjoy playing, you know, or they, they enjoy watching movie. So if imagine if you're watching movie together and they're so engrossed, they love it. Yeah. At some point, they will let out something. Then we need to just make sure that we are picking what is happening, we were what you're saying. News. We were watching the news with my son and we were watching um, the news about Joy Floyd. And yes. after they, they actually showed where the policeman was kneeling on his neck, holding him down. And you know what my son said? He said, mommy, if I was his son, I would be very angry. That was what he said. I was like, it's the right reaction. It's something yeah. to be angry about. about yeah. But when you're hungry, you've got to control your anger. I, I just tried. But yeah. at that point, I, I didn't expect that to come from him. Like he put himself it's in the position of a son. Yes, that's it. So that's why I'm saying that some human. people that this thing have affected like very closely and they need to mm -hmm. handle it because if we continue with it, it's going to be chaos We're at the way. end of it. Did you get what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. Omo we have said, I think we need to be our children's best friend right from the, from cradle so that they will yeah. be able to relate with us freely at every at any stage of their life. I, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I agree with you totally. Thank you, Shio Oshigbeso, for joining us. Um, Toby Temi just said, I don't know anything about teenagers. Don't worry. They will teach us. <laughs> Speak <laughs> from your psychological we'll, background. <laughs> we'll be fine. <laughs> we'll be fine. Uh, I think you she know, just said, build their mind with the truth. Yeah, and I think we've touched on that, like feeling them with the right thing, being their friend from a young age. Yeah. And I, I, would, I would also want to say that we should not be ignorant. We, we can't um, be ignorant, rather, about this. If you were to look back at when you and I were teenagers, did we say everything to our parents? No. Mm -mm, no. And the, the condition there would not even allow you to come back and say <laughs> something. Do you I understand know. what I mean? You would. So, you would. Uh -huh. so even though here we are still trying to unlearn certain things, we yeah. still have some traits of that African parent and other yeah. that yeah. our children would think, can I actually say this? So I think engaging in play with our teenagers would be yeah. a good way to let them. I think there's some things your out. kids will tell you and you're supposed to jump off the chair and blow. Exactly. You just, and you just try to calm yourself. Just mm -hmm. be there. Okay? So when you know, they leave, you're it. like, ah, how did we get I here? <laughs> and you know, yeah. And what I learned from my oh. pastor 
what I learned from my senior pastors is that when certain things are happening around them or in the life of their children, they won't respond. Yeah. You know, they won't react rather. Yeah. Oh, that happened. Oh, we're so sorry. Oh, you know, just move on. But when you get to your room, get on your knees I've, and I've talk to God to about that. that. I've learned to so, do that. Exactly. So I'm learning to... Yeah, I've got very inquisitive kids and sometimes they'll mm-hmm. say something and I'll be like, I don't even have an answer for it. That's I'll just it. go back and say, Holy Spirit, what do I say? Help me. Help what me. do I say? Because I can't yeah. afford to say the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Because they yeah. don't forget. Our kids don't yeah. forget the things we see. Especially yeah. the ages from birth to like 10 year old. You I are can't... all the institution they know. They yeah. do not forget the things we say. So it's really important, Very you know. Important. I, important. Yeah, I know my child will say to me when he's, he's maybe he's telling me what happens in school and he'll say, I know you will tell me to love everyone. I said, you know, that's what I would say already. So there is no point go, going <laughs> deeper. Right. But yeah. you know, yeah. So I think I, it's, I think it's really important. should really be raised in love. Should be raised in love. Like in totality of love. No hatred mm. in any way. No hatred. No it is not of God. Way. It is not of God. In any way. Look at, for instance, Jesus, when he was on earth, mm. The Canaanite um, woman came to him, mm-hmm. asking him to pray for a daughter who was sick. Mm-hmm. And she kept asking. Mm-hmm. Even though he said he had come for the Israel, Israelites, he yeah. said, wow, this person has faith. I've got to yeah. attend to her. Yeah. And he did it. it. It didn't go about picking who he was going to attend to yeah. or not. Yeah. Yeah. And the same way, even though everyone seemed to be doing wrong to him, he showed us an example of love. So we should not also choose who we are going to help or who we are going to respond to when they are in need. And that's where we should raise our children. So even if they've done something bad to you in the past, when you see them in need, be the first to stand up to that need. Yeah, yeah. I think it will help them and strengthen their minds as they grow. Like, like, um, like we've always said, their, their perception of life is based on what they're yeah. supposed to that's it. So if they seen mommy and daddy full of hatred, they are going to eat the mm-hmm. mold. That's like, that's what like, they do. Like like I always say, you don't. There are some things you don't do while your children are there that you see them doing. You try to hide the it from them so that they don't do it. But you see them and some doing conversations it. you don't hold in their it's, presence. It's, it's like a spirit. It flows into the kids. So yeah. let's say you've got something that you don't. Let, let's say for instance, a parent that steals. You don't mm-hmm. steal while your children are there. But at some Mm-mm. point, they start stealing. And you'll be like, I've never done this when you are there. Like, And they do it because it's like a spirit. So it's what we dispense that they'll get. I'll, it is what uh, we dispense give, that they'll get. To give you a more practical... Love you too, um, Mandy. Mandy. <laughs> A, a practical scenario is talking about other people before yeah. your children. You should yeah. never engage in that. Yeah, yeah. You're going to raise them to do the same to people. Yeah. Never. In, in my house, we, we would not talk yeah. about someone else in their presence because yeah. when you've forgotten what that person has done or you've forgiven, you've moved yeah. on, the children will not forget that conversation. Sometimes we try so to speak, are really speak your regard to say things. And the They're day still I picking. To, the day I got on know that all of them they understand what we are saying i just look pick it. now this this is it. Like <laughs> just stop talking <laughs> or we look keep it in your get to your bedroom <laughs> exactly <laughs> they, no they shouldn't know about something so don't be telling I you think let us approve <laughs> <laughs> oh my god all right let's let's go um to the next and um, we've got about um 20 more minutes okay let's go to the next um thing which we are going to discuss does prayer work work for racism or does it work against racism how do i say it does it work prayer prayer works yeah prayer works for all things including racism i'm gonna share as a family when we pray we pray for our children you will not be a victim of abuse you will not be a victim of racism racism you will not be a victim of any evil and when we pray we, we make him pray for his friends in school as well. Yeah. We're not just concerned about your well-being. We're concerned about your, about your friends. friends' well-being, yeah. the people you're doing life with. So even all through this COVID-19, when he's praying at night, he will pray for his friends. He will ask me, Mommy, I hope my friends are doing well. 
prayer works. And when our children understand from a very young age, mm -hmm. they will know how to communicate with God with everything. Uh -huh. You know, Second Corinthians 10, verse 3 to 5, talks that we, we do not war against natural things, you know. The weapons of our warfare are not kind of, even though we are walking in the flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh. Like we established at the beginning, this is a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual combat that is going on here. It's the enemy at work, making the children of God hate themselves. See, whether somebody has come to Christ or not, they are still God's children. God loves every man. Yeah, yeah. So this is the enemy. It's just like two brothers fighting themselves. Do you think the father will be happy? Mm -hmm. And that's how God sees it. Like, don't we get that picture? Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Do dogs make friends based on color? Mm -hmm. Dogs? No. They don't make friends based on color. Animals it's, don't make friends it's, based, it's based on color. They, exactly. exactly. That's how we need to know that when things happen, we address the spirit behind it. So if my child comes back and tell me certain things are happening in school that I know they are going out of hand, the, my first point of contact is in prayer mm. rebuking the power the yeah. spirit behind it and praying for peace prayer works i tell you yeah. I've, I've seen a case where people have been prayed for and racist actions that they've experienced as as has gone down you know yeah. that does, it does even it, does it not even happen to us at work when people mm -hmm. just hate you for your color and all of a sudden they just yeah. become nice and you just wonder mm -hmm. how did that happen Prayer works mm -hmm. when we tell yeah. God it Prayer sorts works. it really. Prayer works. It, it sorts it. Um, Toby Temi is saying, um, oh, Kakebi just said, um, prayer works for everything. Yeah, it does. Mm. She said, there's a prayer point I learned when I was not yet married. That is, mm. that God should show you who my kids are. Mm. She know, should let me know who let they me are. Know who they how have. To I, 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 I love to read about it. parenting. I love to read 10 steps to the best parenting. But I believe the ultimate is the Holy Spirit because you cannot raise That's the it. same child and two kids the same way. The same way. They've got different personality and the best person that can help you to raise them is, well is the Holy Spirit. So in as much as you are looking at yourself as the good parent, you still ha have to tell the Holy Spirit to we need help you. You, we need help every we day. Need, we need help every day to, to tell God to lead you to, to raise this kid according to his purpose for their lives and not yeah. to have regrets at the end of the day. Which Did is you important. Understand? Which is very important. So, and like these kids, like you said, they are just like a plain sheet and you write whatever you want on it. If you mm -hmm. just scribble rubbish on it, you rip rubbish. If you scribble the best words of life on it, you rip you the best it. words of life. So I, I think we should just be intentional about these things. When we discuss it with our children, we should try and make sure that um, we raise them in the love of Christ, no matter what. Yeah. Sometimes when yeah. my kids, maybe one did something to the others, elder and he's saying, uh, I asked him for this, he didn't give me, so I'm not giving him this. I kept, I'll keep saying, you don't take revenge. You don't do this. That's I'll it. be like, but mommy is not fair. I said, well, it's never been fair. We've all done it to God. He doesn't repay us <laughs> with it. what, That's it. what we do to him. And he still gives us, mm -hmm. sometimes we reject him and he still comes back to us and mm -hmm. give us that thing. So you have to like do it over and it, there's no ending to it. You've got to love, love, yeah. love, love until you die. There's yeah. no end, no matter yeah. what the person has done to you. Yes. Isn't it amazing? Jesus didn't say they will know we are his disciples or followers by miracles. He said by loving one another. Ghana Daniel just so, said he is a dropper. I saw that. I saw that. I saw that. Oh, let's drop on. I know, I know, like adults, we've got loads <laughs> of story to tell. We've got like loads mm. of stories. I've, I've applied for jobs before and maybe they didn't know who I was before. I, and when I get a bit like, you will see the atmosphere will just change. Like, is this a person we've been dealing with over the phone? And you just practically lose the job. <laughs> mm. It is well. It, it, it's, it's just been like that, but I just don't see it as God's plan for me. I, I think that is just my mind about everything. Anything that doesn't work for me is not supposed to work. So whatever is supposed to work for me will definitely work. So um, while we're waiting for Theresa to connect again, I don't know what happened to her network. 
and we're going to be talking about how to report to the right medium. Oh, you were trying to connect back now. I don't know what happened to. Yeah, you went blank. <laughs> <laughs> At my head, you went blank. <laughs> really? Yeah. We're yeah. going to be so, uh, about... talking about the right medium to report to and when to report, when you should need, when you should um, seek for help. Let me let yeah. me Obviously. quickly state a personal scenario. When I first came into the UK, there are some kids on the street that will come to the front of the house and be mm. making um, like the sound of a monkey. Wow. Or when they see me walk, they are kids. What age? What age? Between the age of 10. Between you see, 10, they, 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 they know what's happening. Between 10 Not the and young let's age. say 15. They'll come they know to the what front they're of the house, and when I open the door to look out, they'll just run. So I just look wow. at them and smile. So one day, when, when my kids came after me, I was like, I think I should have reported this because I've got kids in that, this house now. I don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I did not report it, and I've not mm. seen them since last summer. I've not seen, two summers ago. So. I've not seen them. But I, I was just thinking, what what time is it appropriate for you to report? racist actions yeah okay i like those kids i was gonna say sometimes racist action is based on ignorance some of them have never seen people of color yeah. you know people that are exposed and are seen people of color would would not do that and definitely those kids they know what they are doing with the sound we're making and everything but i'm glad that it stopped and your children didn't have to start experiencing that yeah. but i think yeah. It's okay when it when it's not an assault yet. Like as you were sharing that, the scripture that came to mind is that love covers the multitude of sin. Yeah. They might want to do something wrong, and you you are showing them love. Like you said, you come out and smile, then they will run away. They might find out what are we even trying to do to this person? She she's not bothered. She can't be bothered. Let's just leave her. Yeah. You know. But once they see they are getting an hedge over someone, they will continue to do it. Uh huh. Yeah. So I think I think as long as it's still married, if it, it if it has not gotten to the point of hurting the person, assaulting the yeah. person, or destroying your property, like breaking your windows and all that, we don't need to let the yeah. police know about it. That's what yeah. I would say. If it has not come to destroying your things and like all of that or attacking, them. yeah, like assault, attacking, I don't think it's necessary to tell the police. And even in school, as long as it's still within the kids, not that they are bullying actually, you know. Yeah. We don't need to respond. But yeah. when they when it comes to bullying, then we should let the school authority know yeah, about it, it first of all. Point where your child doesn't want to go to school anymore. Exactly. The school authority should know. Yeah. And if they've done nothing about it, the police should get involved. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they should know. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that's the appropriate. I would like people from the comment, like Hakibi just said they are ignorant. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. ignorance, really. I, I just see them and I just smile. I'm like you kids don't know nothing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I believe we can do more. And I, mm -hmm. I believe yeah, we should. One, one, one thing I, I think we do much as um, Africans, let me say not as Africans, as humans generally, is that we generalize things based on ge geographical locations. Mm. Let's say just look at this um, part of the world and say, oh, this is what they do there. They kill people. Look at this one, they do internet fraud. Look at this one, they... You cannot generalize. It is not everyone in the place yeah. that does it. Yeah, I was going to say that because we live in Scotland, in Glasgow, and I tell you, the people of Glasgow are really welcoming, honestly. Mm. Mm. The, the Scottish people, the Glaswegians are really welcoming. And the first day we stepped here, we felt like one of them. In fact, we were mm. favored even by the Scottish people so we on the streets i've never experienced this you know in church and yeah. communities that would never and even for my yeah. child in school they are comfortable they are confident yeah. in school you know so it's not everywhere you know it might be happening in some parts definitely but yeah. it's not yeah. everywhere yeah. so we shouldn't judge so i shouldn't go to a place where it's not happening with the mindset that it's, it's happening, happening. And you know what, what people what people do most of the time is that um they have this mindset before leaving Nigeria. Let me use Nigeria. That's it. Because I've met so many Nigerians that came in and they've not even started going out or going to work. And they're just like, oh, these people, they hate black. I'm like, why did you say that? Have That's you even true. met them? Have you even right. had any conversation with them? 
Mm-hmm. Did you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So they just yeah. built this defense before they start mm-hmm. moving out. And it, it disturb, it's disturbing really when you just already have an answer to whatever they are going to say. Do yeah. you get what I'm saying? Because some people are just like, yeah. they don't like mm-hmm. me. So when what they do naturally to people of their color, when they do it to you, you just you assume it's racist. As racist yeah. Which is not. It's not right. Do, yeah. do you get what I'm saying? Like somebody that mm-hmm. makes makes a mistake with a patient some in the hospital and normally they should report and they reported you and you're saying it's racist. Mm-mm. No. Do, do you get no. what I'm saying? So I think we should not um, raise our kid to, to build such a um, wall of defense. Never. Or, like, Never. These people, they don't like you. So no. you've got to like walk your way up. No. Do, do you get what I'm saying? Because people yes, do it. Yes. Um, I could be just say it's due to mentality as well. Yeah. yeah. People have this like mentality. Say, yeah. And they yeah. expect that the, the people will be racist against them. So that's what they will get. Yeah. Their expectation. I, I is it, I just throwing, uh, I think she <laughs> was just throwing an unexpected, unexpected question to us. Is it peaceful? Okay. Is the peaceful process a good thing for Christians? Hmm. Um, <laughs> basically, yeah. I think um, a Christian should yeah. stand up to their rights sometimes. Yeah, not yeah. not sometimes. Every time it's needed, you need to like affirm yeah. the truth and let them know your stand. It's not, it's not a question of faith. You're first of all no. human before you're because Christian. So. They are not going against the law. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You are not killing people. You are not doing any, are against the law destroying. of the land and against the law, the law of, the of land. God. As long as they are not going against the two of them, I think it is all right for you to go on a peaceful protest. Yeah. Um, For let's just say it is important for us as people to relate with people in our community. Mm -hmm. Let them get to know you. And like I always said, win with love. Even when they hate you, win with, like you responded, I just said, we just have to win with love. We just have Mm -hmm. to win every time even when they hate you win with there are people that hate you that you just still help you still do things for them do you get what i'm yeah. saying so i yeah. think the best thing is just make sure you are winning with love yeah. every point in time just win with love most of the time yeah, you see us win. as a threat and come with an offensive attitude yes it, it just takes you to because like i said we general people generalize a lot so they're like these people yeah what they do they've said they do this they do that they do this but they've not met you. They don't know what you can do. But they will mm-hmm. eventually have opportunity to meet you. So what are you going to show to them? To tell them that you are different and not everybody mm-hmm. does whatever they think you're mm-hmm. doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think it's really important. Like for that said, in our community, we should be a part of what is happening there. In our children's schools, we should be a part of what is happening there. Make mm-hmm. friends with those people. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it's really important for us to be intentional about it yeah. be intentional about having people of other culture and race yeah. as friends yeah. that's the first place for me i don't just want to build a community of fellow nigerians nigerian community or nigerian association that's not what i'm looking for nigerian parent association no. build a community of people of other colors other culture yeah. Yeah. whatever build community with other blacks build community with asian build community with the white build community with the caribbeans whoever because yeah. this is when we know if we are truly living yeah. in love it's yeah. easy for me to love a fellow nigerian it's very easy yeah so I but we need to build a community and that's when they will also know that we are not a threat to them rather we can be people that they can also love and build relationship it's with i think it's takes, important it takes a, a point. conscious effort yes takes, and that so, community starts so from really tender want to young be your age. friend they want to relate with you but because they don't know much about you they don't know what you can take they don't know your culture so they're like oh yeah. what if we take them flowers and they refuse it what if we get them this and they refuse? Do you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you mm-hmm. really have to like come down to everybody's level, study people and get to know them so that um, yeah. we can spread Christ. Um, thank you everyone yes. for joining. This is going to end in 25 seconds. Mm. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. I don't want us to come back. I want so to be much. speaking to this one hour. Thank you, Theresa. I appreciate this. Thank you, thank you so everyone much. for joining. We've learned a lot today. God bless you all. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll be expecting us next Tuesday with another topic.
God bless you. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Great.